Hello everyone, welcome again. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I haven't posted an episode for a little while because it's been a little bit of a flat couple of days, what with the England performance at the World Cup. And so I thought I would just take in the next round of games as a neutral uh, to try and lift the spirits of what was a, a pretty hard coming down to earth uh, game for England after the euphoria and the offensive and attacking play against Iran. Um, it was revert to type uh, against the United States. I don't want to get too much into the game itself, the tactics, the performances. I think that's been uh, done by others and uh, the media, uh, you know, too too much already. What I wanted just to, to touch on was England moving forward and briefly touch on some of the other countries as well. Um, I was very disappointed, although not totally surprised, against the United States. Um, in the first game against Wales, America showed themselves to be a very hard-working, high-tempo pressing team. Wouldn't say they've got the most amount of quality. If you refer to the World Cup preview episode uh, that I did just before the tournament started, uh, I said that this was not a classic American side in terms of marquee players and the quality that they'd had in years gone by. You think of Landon Donovan, you think of Brian McBride, um, Clint Dempsey, Claudia Reyna, players who could play one touch, two touch, who could make things happen, who could score goals. They were very consistent. Um, I don't think they've quite got that now. Pulisic is obviously a threat. We saw when he hit the bar, but he drifts in and out of games, isn't always the most consistent performer. It was the midfield which was where their strength lay. Uh, they pressed to a very high level for the majority of the match. They did not have a drop-off in performance. That was very impressive. Uh, defensively, they looked generally quite solid. Everyone knew their position. Players who perhaps had had a slightly weaker second half against Wales, you think of Serginio Dest, for example, they maintained their level for the whole 90 minutes. It was very impressive from the United States. And the general threat, the team that looked more likely to score, was the USA. From an England perspective... To go from the attacking mindset, the higher tempo and the verve that they showed against Iran, to go back to the way that they've been performing over the last few months, such as in the Nations League, that's the most disappointing aspect of this. Most fans would agree that if England play to their strengths, if England are looking to be on the front foot, looking to go out and play attacking football, to score goals and win games, if England lose... Fans would take that because they're trying to play football with the right attitude, in the right way. Go out on your shield. Don't go out in a limp manner. What we've seen in the big moments and what we've seen in tournaments so far under Gareth Southgate, unfortunately, has been that limp, that stifled in terms of creativity and that very passive, pragmatic approach. Against Croatia in the World Cup... 2018 in Russia, the semi-final. England took the lead early. The Croatians were rattled. And what England didn't do is continue to press, continue to be on the front foot, try and get that second goal. They allowed the Croatians to grow into the game. England, very, very early on, if you recall, actually went into quite a, a protection mode. It's quite, I suppose it's quite easy when you've got a defender as your manager to protect what you have. If you have a lead, it's quite easy to sort of drop off and, and go for a, what they now call a low block. And a, sometimes reading the game, reading how the momentum is at the time, is one of those nuanced little things, making use of your substitutions or making little tweaks to, to the players that you've already got on the pitch. Sometimes just even, as you see some of the managers on the, on the touchline, who are very sort of vociferous and flamboyant. They're trying to get their teams to move up the pitch five or ten yards. Against Croatia, that didn't happen with Gareth Southgate. What we saw in the Euros last year was a number of flat performances and a lot of passive play. Scotland, which was a very drab nil-nil, the second game of the Euros. Um, for large parts of that game, Scotland looked a threat. And of course, England were booed in that match. That was a game that England could have taken by the scruff of the neck and won and could have progressed with two wins from two much sooner. Then we fast forward to the final against Italy, 
very much a carbon copy of the semi-final against Croatia. England got an early goal, and England then dropped off. They sat back. They didn't push to get a second. And what we're seeing England's form coming into the tournament through the Nations League, and what we saw against the United States, was England reverting to type. Not pressing, not being on the front foot, not playing at a tempo, not looking to work the ball, not looking to be an attacking force. It's like in boxing or MMA, the best form of defence is attack. A lot of people try and be a counter-puncher, but at least they're trying to punch. England were doing nothing. They, at times, were walking the ball, just playing it around at the back. If it went into midfield, they played the easy ball, which was either back to the centre-back or out wide to the full-back. England's midfield was all over the place. Nobody was in five or ten yards to make a pass. They weren't looking to play incisive passes or work the ball or take anyone on. They weren't really doing an awful lot, to be honest with you. Of the few opportunities when they did actually move the ball, um, there was a, a little one-two where Bellingham pulled the ball back uh, to Harry Kane, I think, in the first half. He had a shot blocked. A couple of set plays where either Maguire or Kane were inches away from making contact. I think there was a move where Mason Mount had a shot from the edge of the box. Very few and far between. England just were not making runs. They were very passive. There was no breaking through the lines. There was no playing on the shoulder. There was no zip to their play. There wasn't any anything. It was just blur. Whereas the United States, they picked up from where they started against Wales. And they played in a similar manner that England did against Iran. From the very first kick, there was a spring in their step. They were up for the game. They very much were playing with energy, with intensity. They lack a bit of quality, as I said, um, which was a saving grace for England. Against a better team, England would have been done possibly two or three. It's worrying that England play so passively. It's not even in a pragmatic manner. There was nothing there. The body language was flat. No one was up for the game. No one wanted to take ownership or leadership the game by the scruff of the neck. And it passed everyone by. The most worrying thing, the most frustrating thing as an England fan was, forget about the calibre of team that Iran are or aren't. And I happen to think they were much better than they showed against England. Against Wales, they were very, they were very good. They will cause America problems. England started the game against Iran by looking to make a statement. They were confident on the ball. They were, they were moving it around at pace. They weren't passive at the back. Every time that either Stones or Maguire or Trippier or Shaw got the ball, they were looking to play the ball into space, into something like a Declan Rice or a Bellingham. They were making runs off the ball. They were looking to work the ball through midfield. They were looking to get it wide and get crosses in or play one-twos on the edge of the box. They were trying to make things happen. And if they couldn't go one way, they would recycle the ball. Uh, they would be patient, but they were looking to have an end product. Against America, there was none of that. From the, from the off, America were in England's faces. It was America doing the running. It was America doing the pressing. And England didn't do anything. That is the frustrating thing. Above all else, forget about individual performances or half chances or missed chances or, or, or anything of that nature. Collectively, everyone was flat. And it speaks volumes that the manager, Gareth Southgate, is happy with a passive point um, yes, you can argue it's tournament football. Yes, you can argue about not wanting to peak too soon. Yes, you can argue about getting out the group, not wanting to pick up injuries, all that kind of stuff. But that game was there for the taking. England could have won that game. England could have set a, sent a statement to the rest of the tournament in the same way that France have by winning two out of two, qualifying with time to spare, basically winning the group. Then, of course, you can make the substitutions or rest players in the third game, whatever it is that you want to do. And I'm, I'm concerned at the attitude and I'm concerned at the lack of intent. The level, mentally and physically, that England were at from the very first kick is concerning. I, I hope it's not because of the heat and humidity. I hope it's not because of what they have or haven't been doing between the games. I hope it's not a case that they only get up, get um, motivated in certain circumstances, because that's a worry. It's also a worry that Gareth doesn't seem to trust his squad. A lot of people have been talking about the Phil Foden issue. Um, if there was any concern about Harry Kane at all, 
he shouldn't have played. Against the USA, anyone that we put in attack should have the capability to score if we have the right application. And the fact that he's just going through the motions trusting the same players all the time is a bit worrying. Because if there's an instance where they're not right, he doesn't seem to have his faith in a Rashford or a Wilson or a Grealish or anyone just to do something a bit different. So, yeah, it's a bit flat at the moment. We can only hope that against Wales, England come out with the right intent. It can be a scrappy 2-1 and England win as long as they show the right intensity, the right attitude, the right tempo, the focus. If England don't show that, then that is a concern for the tournament. And I just, yeah, I'm just a bit worried and a bit deflated at the moment that England aren't just doing the basics. Um... So all that optimism that I think we had in terms of how we applied ourselves against Iran has been eroded quite significantly. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, moving on for the rest of the tournament. Uh, games that have literally just, just happened now. Um, we've seen um, Argentina improve. They couldn't have got much worse against Mexico who were, who were awful in that match. They showed such a little attacking intent. Um, Argentina worked much better although they made slightly more half chances and at least at points looked like they did want to win the game Di Maria looks like the only Argentine player prepared to take people on Messi scored a fantastic goal there's no getting away from that um, there's still question marks about his leadership and his courage and his ability to sort of puff out his chest and be Argen Argentina's main man but he's more of a leader by example than anything and you can't take anything away from the goal he scored. They scored another one late on. They've given themselves a very good opportunity now to get out of the group. If they come out with a couple of wins and end up winning the group, the Saudi game will be consigned to history. It just means they'll have to be reminded of it every four years. Um, Argentina's still not playing great. Not, don't think they've got the right balance. Um, we'll have to wait and see how they improve as the tournament wears on. But if they put another performance in like that, against Poland, I would expect Argentina to, to go through. Uh, Brazil, second half performance against Serbia was sort of more in keeping with the players that they've got at their disposal. Strangely, not too dissimilar to Manchester United with Ronaldo or Portugal with Ronaldo. Uh, Brazil look a better side when Neymar's not in. Uh, they look like they're not looking to pass to him. It looks like other players can come out of their shell more. Um, I was disappointed with Rafinha. Um, I thought they looked better when they had Rodrigo and Anthony on the pitch. I think Rodrigo, Anthony, Vinicius Jr. and then take your pick of, between Richarlison and Gabriel Jesus and Brazil looked pretty formidable. I think Casemiro holding in, in, in midfield is a, such, a, such a bonus for them. I thought Paqueta was poor. I thought Bruno from Newcastle should have been given some minutes because he's been excellent this season. Um, wouldn't surprise me against better sides to actually see a Casemiro Fabinho um, double pivot. I think Fabinho and Casemiro give you energy, work rate, de defensive solidarity. They can ping the ball. Although it looks like Fred might be one of their go-to uh, midfield options. So it might be Casemiro holding and Fred given the nod for a bit of energy and bite, maybe even carrying the ball through midfield, because Paqueta did nothing. I'd like to see Bruno given an opportunity. Uh, defensively, they looked pretty sound. Vlavic and uh, Mitrovic didn't have much of anything to sniff at, really, in the context of you know getting balls in the box and seeing if Brazil were vulnerable. Thiago Silva looked like he had a cigar on. Marquinhos looked solid. Alisson looked a bit flappy. A couple of times balls came in the box, corners... He didn't look his solid self, which was a bit interesting. I was a bit surprised by that. Uh, right back, it looks like Dani Alves might get a start. Um, so we have to see if that has any impact. But we know what Dani Alves gives you. He gives you bombing forward, energy, tenacity, bite and quality on the ball. I thought Brazil were pretty solid. They were unspectacular in the first half, but didn't really look like they were going to go behind. And then they did what they needed to do in the second half. A bit of flair. 
not too much samba. Brazil, for a little while now, have not been the samba boys. More pragmatic than flary, but they do have it in them. And I think they looked better when Neymar wasn't on the pitch. They looked like the other players could puff their chests out, take a bit of responsibility, play with a bit more freedom and expression. Uh, and it's going to be interesting for the next couple of games because Neymar's been ruled out. Certainly for the next one, uh, but possibly for the entire of the group. And if Brazil turn on the style and win two or three in their next couple of matches, then Chiche has got a, a hard decision to make in terms of Neymar's return. But Brazil looked good. France looked solid. Uh, they've beaten Denmark 2-1. Um, there was only a five or ten minute period where Denmark looked like they had France on the ropes. And that was after France had scored. And then France scored again. And either side of the goals, France looked the better side. They looked like they had, without really having to extend themselves, they looked like they had Denmark at arm's length. When they worked the tempo, they looked like they could hurt the Danes. And so it proved. Um... They've got goals in the team. I think if Dembele can just come in from the flank a bit, he's a goal threat. Kingsley Coman is a goal threat if he comes on. Uh, Griezmann's been quiet this tournament. Hasn't really looked like scoring, but he could come alive at any point. Uh, and Beppe has got four goals already. Giroud has a couple. They've got so many options, so many ways to hurt you. Um, so France and, France and Brazil look like the, the top teams so far that have played two games. We have to see how Belgium are going to sort of kick on. They can't afford another performance like they did against Canada. They're coming up very shortly. Um, as I said, Argentina have improved, but they'll have to go up another level or two to really show that they are in the mix. And then we've got Spain, Germany. If the Germans lose, they're out. They basically have to beat Spain. Um, and we have to see how Spain do against a decent side. Uh, the Germans will be organised and they will press a bit and they'll, they'll have quality. Uh, if Spain come through that and look good, then you have to throw Spain into the mix. So it's been an interesting start to the tournament. I think the fact that England have reverted to type, which is just so horrifically poor and disappointing, brings them down a peg or two. I would say certainly that Brazil and France so far look like they are the teams to beat at the World Cup.